it was Glenn Gregory from Heaven 17. He said, I've got to show you this. And he went on the internet and he showed me a kind of demonstration of, of Melodyne. And I thought, this, this isn't a piece of software, this is black magic. We've been, I've been working on a new Ultravox album, which is the first one in 26 years. <laughs> So it's been a long time coming. Uh, it's just something that that, uh, that happened after we, we got back together again about two years ago uh, to celebrate uh, 30 years since we had written Vienna, sort of from when I joined the band. And uh, we did a tour uh, to celebrate that with no intention at all of ever doing any new material. And during the tour, uh, Universal uh, in Germany came along and saw us and offered us a deal, which we promptly refused. And then we figured out how we could possibly do it. Because we didn't want to commit to doing something in case it was rubbish. So uh, we, we, tr we went out to my house in Canada and we built a few studios in the house and kind of lived there and wrote there and created there and recorded there. So there was a lot of creativity in a very short space of time. And of course these days, uh, you know, with the, the modern technology, you know, once you've got an idea, you don't have to just stick it on a cassette and worry until you get in the studio. You do it, you put it down there and then. It's, you know, it's as good a quality as you'll get anywhere else in the world. So we were just doing that and it was instant and you get something done and move straight on to the next thing. So it was a very creative, uh, intense environment. It was great getting back with the band again. Um, and it always sounds like a cliche saying that, back with the band, but it's true. Uh, the, the, the 20 odd years that we'd been apart dis disappeared. It was fantastic and it, and it was it was the most bizarre thing and as I said earlier even before we had all the soft synths sorted and we had all the sounds created and all the keyboard splits and all of that stuff the moment we started playing with whatever sounds we had just to kind of blow the cobwebs away it sounded like Ultravox. It was just weird. So there is something about you know those four people coming together or any group of uh, musicians coming together and there's something more than just the technology or the instrumentation or whatever there's something about the uh, osmosis that people have that people generate which makes a band individual and unique it was glenn gregory from heaven 17 and he was down visiting me here in lovely bath and uh, he said i've got to show you this and he went on the internet and he showed me a kind of demonstration of, of Melodyne. And I thought, this, this isn't a piece of software, this is black magic. This is just weird, you know. I couldn't tell whether he was being honest or not, serious or not. And he said, no, it's fantastic, it's an amazing thing. So I went out and I, and I had to kind of get a copy. Um, and I did it, I did it, and I'll have to say this honestly, I did it thinking, have I got the capacity to learn another really complicated you know, piece of machinery, you know, piece of software. So I, I, I got hold of this thing and of course I started playing with it and it was instant. It was just phenomenal what it could do. There's a, there's a fabulous uh, demonstration that's on the internet where someone has downloaded the trial version of it. You can download it and play around with it. You can record 20 seconds or 30 seconds worth of stuff and play with it and see what it does. And they recorded Bohemian Rhapsody the opening a cappella bit of Bohemian Rhapsody and then they put it all in minors and you're like whoa how, how, can you do, how can you do that how can you go into something that exists as an entity as a solid one this is it it's a stereo track how can you get into this piece of music and start manipulating that and moving the pitch of things I don't understand it at all but it's phenomenal I, I, I've found many many uses for it since I use it as a plug-in, because um, I'm lazy, and, uh, and I, I want something that's instant. I, I mean, how, ma how, many great, how many great performances have been scrapped because someone played a wrong note, or someone sang a note flat, or whatever, and you've thrown it away? But besides the fact that you've got something slightly out, timing-wise, pitch-wise, whatever, it's just been thrown away, and maybe the one that you ended up doing and keeping was inferior to what you'd done. 
I, I, we don't do that anymore. You know, now everything I do, I think, I think I'll just stick it in Melodyne and just see if I can make it better. And that's maybe my downfall. Maybe you want to put everything through it because it pitches everything. It's fabulous. You make things absolutely perfect. But I think you've got to kind of train yourself to slap yourself in the wrist and go, no, it sh you know, vocals shouldn't be absolutely perfect. But what it does do is give you the chance to sit and redraw your vocals. And I've done it with I've done it with quite a lot of the Ultravox. Have we all in typical Ultravox style? We all went out and bought a copy of Melodyne. So we all have it in our, our setups. And uh, and I've done things where, you know, I'll take a, a, a vocal, maybe a chorus section or whatever, that's got a particular melody to it, and I'll copy that over somewhere else in the song. Then I'll start playing with the pitching of the notes. I'll start playing with the melody. So I'm rewriting, just like you can on a keyboard or on a guitar, I'm rewriting what I've sung and doing it in a different way or extending notes where I've sung short notes. I can stretch them out. And, and you start to hear what you're doing in a completely different, malleable way that you've never, ever been able to do in the past. Because what you've always done in the past is you record what comes out of your mouth. You can put echo on it. You can put some chorus on it. You can EQ it. You can play around with it a bit. But not to the extent that you can actually do it as if you were playing with MIDI, as if you were m manipulating notes, or, you know, a keyboard part that you put down or a drum rhythm or whatever. Now you can do the exact same thing but with vocals, and I find that just bizarre and, and utterly amazing that, you know, you can think, well, if I just sung that a, a few seconds longer, just pick it up and drag it over and there it is. You know, you might want to re-sing it again, but once you've, once you've painted the melody you, you're really happy with, it's fantastic. I mean, what a great tool. It's like, it's the ultimate demo thing. It's like almost having someone else sing the part for you. You know, and then you say, okay, that's it, that's what I want to do. And then, you know, maybe go in and redo it again or track it or whatever. The other thing it's phenomenal for, which I've never heard anyone talk about, is that when you're doing double tracking, you know, it's really difficult. It's a really odd thing to try and get the intonation and the feel and the timing uh, and pitch, double tracking your own vocals and multi-layering your vocals. And uh, it's always been a scenario where in the past, you spend hours and hours and hours doing it and, and finally honing and dropping in and trying to get it so that the parts sit on top of each other. Now you can sing something. If it's slightly out, timing-wise, you can move the notes, of the, your, you know, the positioning of the notes for your second track or your third track or whatever, and then start stacking these up. That, again, is just phenomenal because I can do that on my own. As you can see here, this is a, a one-man setup. It's not a huge studio. I don't have an engineer sitting doing these things with me. In Canada, I was recording the vocals in a bedroom. Uh, but I was then able to sit and play with the timings and manipulate the vocals afterwards uh, without losing any quality on it, which was just fantastic for me.